Welcome to a captivating journey back in time. In this video, you're going to see some of the most peculiar prototypes to the most outlandish contraptions. These extraordinary vehicles and gadgets will leave you astounded, questioning how such eccentric inventions were even ever conceived. We'll visit the hidden corners of the Soviet innovation, unveiling the craziest machines that defy all expectations and challenge your understanding of what could be possible. Here are the 20 craziest Soviet machines you won't believe exist. Number 20. Kali Project is a classified fighting robot dog. Dogs are considered to be man's best friend. Most of the time, they are loyal and obedient, and when trained in a proper way, they can protect, defend, and even attack. Dogs like the German Shepherd, the Rottweiler, and the Doberman Pinscher, to name a few, are all used in police, military, and other applications involving authority. And so, it should come as no surprise that the Russian military did their best to try and capitalize on this concept while also engaging in the technology. Except that, instead of implementing the use of a more terrifying dog with an imposing stance to strike fear into people, they decided to use a Border Collie. One that's modeled after the classic and beloved Lassie from the 1950s, which the Russians most likely saw as a super genius. So, naturally, they began to experiment to see whether they could turn border collies into cyborg death machines and use them in combat, as one does. So, they did everything from coming up with sketches that would make any Japanese mech robot enthusiast turn into a puddle, to even transplanting the collie's head onto another dog, which surprisingly lived for a considerable time given the circumstances. Eventually, the project would be shut down and the information on it become classified, but why while it lasted, it was surely a little shop of canine horrors that should have never existed in the first place. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. If you want to see one of the craziest Soviet machines you won't believe exist, then this sweet topic is for you. In an era of the Soviet Union, a revolutionary ship would surface, pushing all the limits of maritime technology. The remarkable vessel possessed an extraordinary capability, allowing it to transition seamlessly from sea to land in an astonishing display of engineering prowess. As it approached the shoreline, the wheels which were inside of the hull could effortlessly deploy, making it easy for it to get onto the beach. Spectators gathered, captivated by its unprecedented sight, the Soviet ship's ability to swiftly navigate both aquatic and terrestrial realms would leave everyone astounded, marking a significant milestone in maritime innovation. As always, let me know what you think of this in the comments down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 19. Meet the 2B1 Oka, the Soviet Union's giant atomic mobile mortar. For decades, the United States and Russia, in whatever form that they have existed, have been constantly competing with each other when it comes to technology in order to see whose proverbial gun barrel is bigger than the others. This was never more clear than in the world of astronautics and atomic warfare. Back in a time when the good old US of A was creating the atomic bomb, every other world power was in a race to come up with something of their own. And so, the 2B1 Oka was born. The self-propelled atomic artillery unit was ready as an experimental model in 1957, featuring a 20-meter barrel, which allowed it to fire big rounds. However, the complexity of the unit made it hard to reload quickly, and the recoil damaged every version. The length of this big, girthy beast also made it difficult to transport, and overall, it just became a financial liability, and so it would be abandoned in 1960. Number 18. 1K17 Jati Development on this machine began in the 1970s and then on into the 1980s. Much like every other thing that the governments do, the Soviet Union did attempt to keep the plans for this secret. However, the Pentagon was somehow able to obtain drawings from those who had seen the writing on the wall and then decided to defect. And the bittersweet thing is that most power-lusting regimes with a penchant for guzzling vodka, creating super border collie mech warriors, and painting everything red 
instead just doesn't last, and the project would be abandoned after the collapse of the Soviet Union. It would be determined that the development and manufacturing of the laser projection system had simply just become too expensive and also unnecessary. During a time when it was being pursued, two of these units were tested, with one being eventually scrapped and the other being placed on display in Russia's Army Technology Museum. Number 17. Zavino Project A big part of a military strength comes in the form of air combat and over the years, the Soviet Union, and later Russia, have been in a constant battle of one-upmanship with their enemies, both obvious and perceived. The Zavino project would be conceived in the 1930s as a parasite aircraft that consisted of a Tupolev TB-1, or TB-3 heavy bomber, that was also flanked by two to five fighters. One of these motherships could come heavily equipped with a couple of 550-pound bombs, and successful runs of this attack system were implemented in the German-Soviet War. In all, there were approximately 10 variations of this heavy bomber over the years that saw service in combat, but much like everything else in the Soviet Union and beyond, technology just moved too fast for the efforts that were being put forth, and the final versions of the warships became obsolete and vulnerable and had to be decommissioned. Number 16. Antonov A-40 Armies all over the place are always trying to find new methods for dumping their most hulking and destructive vehicles into theater in the most efficient of ways, and so, when it came to the Soviets, instead of Following the lead of other nations who had loaded their big boomers on light aircrafts, Soviets decided to slap their tanks on the underside of heavy bombers for maximum boom booms. However, one of the biggest problems with air dropping vehicles was that crews had to be dropped in separately and it often caused them to not be able to utilize the tanks immediately. Gliders would change the game and allow crews to arrive with their vehicles and get to the business of blowing things up right away. And so, the Soviets went about that business of making the most glorious gliders that they could that would allow for their tanks to be effortlessly placed into battle. Unfortunately though, the T-60 tanks that the Soviets loved to use were just too big and bulky, and after having issues with several aircrafts displaying difficulty towing the gliders for the tanks, the project would be abandoned. Number 15. K-84 Russian Submarine Russia just loves to create things that can be a little bit over the top, and with the amount of war that rages all over the planet, they of course also have to be prepared for anything at any time. This not only includes threats on land and in the air, but also by the seas in which we all love to swim, fish, and fire off deadly torpedoes. That's where the K-84 Russian submarine comes in. This Delta IV class aquatic destruction vessel was created in the midst of the Cold War when things were a little dicey between the USSR and the United States when it came to public relations. The ballistic missile submarine was manufactured in response to worries about a possible forthcoming threat of countries having to open up their underground silos and spill their nuclear materials all over each other. Russia was keen to this and thought that the battle for big boom supremacy would also be fought both on the surface and under the sea. However, production and testing was super duper slow on the vessel, and even after the fall of the Soviet Union, the end of the Cold War, and the explosion of boy bands, this vessel hung around for decades through various forms and trials. Then in December of 2011, while sitting in dry dock for repairs, a welder caught fire to the scaffolding that was being used and would spread to the vessel, causing a massive amount of chaos and damages. So much so that the authorities said further repairs just from the fire alone would take up to four years. Eventually it was said that the repairs for the fire cost Russia a million rubles, and for a time there was a raging debate as to whether or not the sub was loaded with nuclear weapons when it caught fire. Experts say that if it had been loaded and the fire spread enough, the incident could have very well caused the biggest nuclear disaster since Chernobyl. Number 14. Loon Class Ekranoplan also known as Project 903, the Loon-class Akronoplan was manufactured to be the only ground effect vehicle that was also constructed to be usable as a warship. Now, that sounds confusing. An air-based vehicle that turns into a warship? It's like Transformers gone mad. 
The design was somewhat unique, that's very certain. This monster took to the skies, using lift generated by the ground effect placed on its wings, and was able to soar above the water quite nicely while doing so. Even though it does have the characteristics and features of a plane, it's actually classified as a maritime ship because it's said to actually glide above the water and not actually fly. Also known as the Caspian Sea Monster, it carried a payload which allowed it to be well equipped for anti-surface warfare while also looking pretty good. There were drawbacks to this machine though, because its wingspan was so diminutive, not only did it have to soar extremely close to the surface, when waters were too rough, it had to be grounded due to safety concerns. As time would go on, Project 903 would be decommissioned and it would sit in a harbor for several years before the decision was made to be put on display in Russia's new military weapons-themed attraction called Patriot Park. However, it had to be towed by water, and of course complications arose, but eventually it did make it to land to be viewed by families as a token of Russia's great warfare history while chomping down on some multicolored candy floss. Number 13. The Weirdest Aircraft by Looks – Bartini Berev VVA-14 when you have a look at the Bartini Berev, you may just ask yourself, was this aircraft designed by your 12-year-old nephew after he discovered your brother's edibles on the top shelf of the kitchen after being left home alone for the first time in his life? What looks like a mismatch of a space shuttle, the Millennium Falcon, and an Eagle, the Bartini Berev is certainly an interesting plane to feast your eyes upon. After extensively mulling over thoughts and ideas, which also included the creation of a smaller version as a ground effect vehicle, the first VVA-14 prototype would be completed in 1972, where it made its maiden voyage from an actual runway. In 1974, they then strapped some inflatable pontoons to the thing, which only caused a plethora of problems, but the Soviets were thirsty to make a land and sea amphibious vehicle, so the show had to go on. Overall, the project took 107 flights, with a total flight time of 103 hours, and eventually the only remaining VVA-14 would be retired and placed inside of a museum in Moscow in 1987. But it was not without its pitfalls, as the aircraft would suffer a deal of damages during transport, and the Russians said screw it and decided not to even fix the thing. Today the aircraft is just sitting around all dismantled in a museum, a shell of its former Frankenstein glory. Number 12. The Maz 7907 have you ever seen those old videos of huge missiles being launched off the back of a truck during war operations, testing, and in old movies where that footage was free use and the production company didn't have to pay any royalties? Well, chances are you've seen some version of this vehicle. The MAZ, which is an acronym for the Minsk Automobile Plant, was a 24 by 24 erector transporter type thing that carried a big rocket known as an ICBM. And if you've ever played Command and Conquer Red Alert and built a big rocket truck to blow stuff up, then you were more than likely using one of these big hulking monsters. Or, if you were like me, you spent about two hours constructing like 30 of them and then made them all descend upon your enemy at once, which was very satisfying in those early days of PC gaming. Anyways, two prototypes of this big, long, hard erector were made, but eventually only one survived and would be turned into a shipping vehicle used to transport bridge parts and other construction materials. Number 11. The stealth tank that can disguise itself to look like a car and appear to disappear at the touch of a button. Now, I'm not really certain where this idea that a battle tank can transform into a car and then simply disappear comes from, because the title of this point was literally copied from a trash tabloid site from some article that they wrote that featured way too many pop-up ads, in-page ads, and ads upon ads upon ads, to the point where I just sat there trying to comprehend what I'm even doing with my entire life. All of this while listening to teenagers moan on about 
how they're going to have apartments in New York City or Chicago when they will actually probably end up working in some bank or doctor's office around my city and pop out a few kids to transport around in their used 2011 Honda Accord. One of them is talking about what's obviously her imaginary boyfriend in Florida, and the other one is wearing a Harley Davidson t-shirt, but probably couldn't even tell you what a V-twin engine is. Aside from all of that nonsense, and on to a different kind, this tank is not a car, and a car is not a tank. But what I can tell you is that this tank was constructed by Poland, which is not even part of Russia, so I don't even know why it made this list. And it was based on a tank that was created in Sweden. Now, this isn't really a Soviet-era weapon and vehicle, though Russia was once the Soviet Union, and it's not about Polish vehicles, though Poland was part of the Soviet Union until its demise in 1991. So really, you could just look at it like six degrees of Ronald Reagan and the Cold War in a roundabout way if you squint really hard, suspend your disbelief, and simply roll with it. Which is what I'm doing, because I just sit here and run my mouth all day anyways. All things considered, this Polish battle tank never turned into a car, and it only lasted two years in development and was eventually scrapped. However, before it was, three versions were considered, which saw it acting like a tank, a mine-clearing vehicle, and also a version that could be used for armored vehicle repair. Number 10. The MI-24 Hind Attack Helicopter The Hind Helicopter is the design that mostly comes to mind when you think about Cold War era attack choppers. With its sleek design, ergonomic nose, and a payload big enough to cause a modest amount of damage, this Soviet era and then later Russian era attack helicopter is a formidable foe in the air. In the infancy of the 1960s, it became rather clear to the Soviets that a trend towards an ever-increasing need for battlefield mobility would see the emergence of a battlefield chopper which could be used to perform both fire support and infantry transport missions. And so the early concept for the Hind, known as the V-24, would come into creation. This attack chopper featured a central infantry compartment that was able to house eight troops who were setting back to back, along with a set of small wings that were able to house up to six missiles or rockets, along with a massive twin barrel machine gun attached at the bottom. By 1970, this chopper became a reality, and just two years later, it would see its way into theater in full operations. But not satisfied to simply sit back and be happy with what took all of 10 years to produce it, the designers immediately through the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, out the window, and began creating variations on their masterpiece. Today, it still operates under the MI-35 designation, and one was even recently shot down and recovered by Ukrainian forces in the midst of the Russian invasion of Ukraine conflict that first broke out in 2022. Number 9. The PZL M15 Belfagor when the Wright brothers were first coming up with the concept for making a craft that would be able to take flight, they probably never envisioned such machines like this one. Here we have the PZL M15 Belfagor, a jet-powered biplane that was made in Poland in the 1970s, back when Poland was part of the USSR, so technically it does count. Because it had a very odd-looking design and was a really loud jet-powered biplane, it was named Belfagor, after the Polish demon of folklore, which people thought that it resembled. The first maiden voyage of this prototype would take place on May the 20th of 1973, and it would experience several hiccups and problems. The thing handled like a bull in a china shop, it had a limited range of flight, and the cost to even get this monstrosity off the ground were enormous in the first place. Three years later, and they pushed through with production, and even though nothing was done to fix any of the previous issues. Even so, it would not be until 1981 that production would be halted after only about 175 of these aircraft were able to be produced, in contrast to the planned thousands that were in the works. There was no big announcement that the plane would be permanently grounded, and due to its costs and issues over the arduous production period, nobody really gave a rip about it either. Number 8. This Restored Russian Screw Propelled Vehicle ZVM2901 Doesn't Need a Road at All 
With another foray into the world of trying to complete something that can handle all aspects of war, being land, sea, or air, we now have a look at the Russian amphibious truck known as the ZVM-2901. This behemoth would see its origins in the Russian military way back in the 1970s, a period of time when everyone was coming out of the wrenching years of the Vietnam War and transitioning into platform shoes and the tightest pants possible in an effort to be the king of disco dancing of the world. To speak of its looks, though, is like talking to someone who did too much LSD in the 70s and then trapped you on the couch at a friend of a friend's party that you didn't really want to be at in the first place. It was kind of a mis mash of truck and what the underminer used in Big Hero 6. The oddly designed truck used gigantic screws to move about in what I would imagine only be a cumbersome undertaking. However, it was claimed that this machine never needed a road and could virtually go over anything and everything that it wanted. In fact, it would be a German soldier who first conceived the design, most likely after a night of chain smoking, guzzling stolen French brandy, and conjuring the best ways to commit genocide. This was not the first inception of a screw-driven war machine, though, as they had actually been put into theater and deployed by the military during the Second World War. Number 7. The Kalinin K-7, Russia's Experimental Flying Fortress when it comes to the use of twin boom aircraft, whatever the heck that might mean, there's something of a strange oddity in contemporary aviation. At least that's what the internet claims. And really, who am I to judge what are clearly facts? like every single thing on the internet is. It was said that this craft had a very striking design for its day, and it's even touted that it was once one of the largest aircraft before the days of fancy smanchy jets actually took its merits from this design. And that, my friends, is all very boring indeed. So boring, in fact, that I cannot actually even remember literally what I just said out loud. What's not boring is machine guns, of which this behemoth did have a bunch, alongside featuring an unusual arrangement of six tractor engines on the wing and a single engine for a little extra oomph in the back. That's because, in addition to its size, it could also carry over 21,000 pounds of bombs in its belly, which is also not boring. This craft was able to complete seven test flights before having a catastrophic accident that killed over a dozen people in November of 1933, which was thought to have been an actually reported sabotage. Number 6. Tsar Tank The Tsar Tank comes with a lot of strange and mostly unpronounceable Russian names. It's also pronounced Tsar to us mere mortals, but for some reason features a silent T before its name. It's also a really strange and somewhat unexplainable armored battle vehicle that looks more suited to be in a science fiction film or part of your weird cousin's steampunk collection that's sure to give you an absolute nightmare upon viewing. But don't get confused, it was not actually a tank, even though it was. It looked more like a mutant tricycle than anything else, and it probably looked this way because it it was made at the infancy of the 1900s, during a time where any self-proclaimed genius could generate the capital to build any number of strange contraptions that they wanted to in a warehouse somewhere and then convince people that it was good. 60 feet long and 30 feet tall, it required a crew of about 10 men to operate, while only featuring one machine gun and sometimes a cannon. So it's no small wonder that the Russians only meddled around with this thing for about a year before moving on to something else. Number 5. The Kamov Ka-22 in the 1950s, it was a wild time of post-war evolution to industry, commerce, and entertainment television. On the military front, the armed forces of the world were trying to keep coming up with bigger and better and badder machines to destroy each other with, the impending feeling that a third world war could possibly break out. A lot of countries had already lent their talents to each other in the Korean War in that decade, and so nobody was really allowed to simply rest easy and think that we were all going to be nice to each other. Air supremacy was an ongoing concern, as was the ability to make helicopters more valuable as battle machines in the air and able to travel over longer distances. 
And so, the Russians decided to experiment with the Kamov Ka-22, and it was a fixed-wing aircraft with rotors that were fitted above the wingtips. Featuring two hulking engines, the fuselage could comfortably seat three people above the glazed nose, while the belly could hold up to 80, or conversely, a cargo load of over 16 tons. However, it was also very unstable and had a handful of crashes during testing exercises before being shut down and then abandoned. Only four of these fat boys would end up being produced, with only one having survived for an exhibition display during an event in 1961. Number 4. The MiG-105 At the tail end of the 1970s, the space race had seen its day in the sun. Russia, the United States, and respectively a few other countries had already spent the better part of about two decades coming up with spacecraft, intergalactic missiles, and even monkey astronauts. So by the time that the MiG-105 came around in 1976, everyone was a little more interested in the BG's Welcome Back Cotter and LSD more than anything else. Work on the MiG-105 actually began in the early 1960s, but would be put on pause until the 19th 1970s in response to the United States having produced space shuttles that could shoot astronauts to magical places well beyond the reach of our eyesight into the skies. However, the Russians also wanted bigger and better, and the MiG just didn't have it. After eight test flights, the experiment would be canceled in favor of the Buran project, which was more likened to an actual space shuttle like the Americans had. Number 3. Triton Submarines Known as Project Neptune, this submersible came with an exclusive interior and was designed with improved hydrodynamics, which I think means that it just handled in the water more like a race car than your grandmother's station wagon. It also had some pretty good thrusters, because everyone enjoys a nice powerful thrusting, you know. However, the more bizarre and weird thing is, this is supposed to be a list of the craziest Soviet machines you won't believe exist, and yet here we are talking about a submarine made in America in the last half decade, and it doesn't even have any weapons or military purpose. Oh, the world is such a wacky place sometimes. Number 2. Sukhoi T-4 in 1963, the Soviets were jealous of America when it came to airships and other things that could rain down terror from above, and so they commissioned anyone with a pencil and a drafting table to come up with something that was comparable to the U.S. military's XB-70 Valkyrie, and that's when they settled on the Sukhoi T-4. A functional and mostly flying prototype would finally come into fruition in the autumn of 1971, but then in 1974, they decided to end the project for good. Out of the four planes that eventually were constructed, only one would survive without incident while making it through all of the test flights, and it now sits in some old museum somewhere collecting dust and displaying yet another great failure of Russia's military design inadequacy. Number 1. Ilyushin IL-40 Russians really loved working on experimental planes for the second half of the 1900s, and the Brawny is one of them that could have actually survived with a little bit of foresight. But foresight was not exactly the Russians' main focus. Blowing up everything in the world and ruling it with a red iron fist was. And so only seven of these planes that carried enough payload to take out a small town were ever created. And aside from featuring over 3,000 pounds of bombs and being a snappy little lighter weight and agile fighting machine, with a jet engine, it also came with a rear view mirror, presumably so that the Russian pilot could flip the bird to anyone that he blitzed by to be able to laugh at their reactions as he looked behind him. Very little effort was actually put into this project, and eventually, like most things of that era, it would be cancelled in a small amount of time. Well, that was a terrifying glimpse into some of the more bonkers and ill-conceived weapons of the 20th century. Which of these crazy machines blew your mind? And were there any that I missed? As always, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.